The town of Shell is on the western edge of the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. It's named after the Dutch Shell Corporation, as it was once a base for the company's oil prospecting efforts in the region. It's also the regional base for Wings of Hope, an NGO focused on offering aid to underserved communities like the Warani and Shuar people of the Amazon, like flying in medical supplies and performing aerial evacuations. Now Oris is part of that mission. They've created a limited edition watch that raises money for Wings of Hope. This episode of Watches in the Wild is a little different. This is a story about how a watch fits into a larger mission to help indigenous communities deep in the Amazon rainforest. When I first arrived in Shell, I was greeted by the president and CEO of Wings of Hope, Brett Heinrich. He'd come all the way down to Shell from St. Louis, Missouri, where Wings of Hope is based. So Brett, I just want to kind of shed some light on how this watch connects to this plane. And I think the answer is in Wings of Hope bringing together the two, and, and Oris collaborating with Wings of Hope. And I wanted to get a little bit of background on how that came to be and how it resulted in this watch specifically. Well, Oris is a great partner because they really took the time to ask us what we envisioned in a watch. We interviewed our pilots and our pilots said, we like simplicity, yeah. we like classic design, we don't want anything too complex. How does the sale of this watch actually drive the mission forward? Absolutely, Wings of Hope has a long story history, but not enough people understand the value we bring into the lives of people around the world. Mm -hmm. The sale of this watch will reach pilots and aircraft aficionados around the world and expose the Wings of Hope story. It's been a great new blessing for the organization to partner with a world-class watchmaking company like Oris to really raise awareness of Wings of Hope and the great work we're doing. Our mission is to travel to two remote regions of the Ecuadorian Amazon, starting from Shell, which is about a five-hour drive from Quito, the capital of Ecuador. And we're here to deliver essential medical supplies to those communities. This is what Wings of Hope does on a daily basis. And today, we're along for the ride. So nobody knows this airspace better than Marcos. <laughs> and I have a few questions before we head out. So Marcos, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. I want to get a sense of where we are relative to, to Quito, which is the capital city which many folks mm -hmm. know, where we are and where we're going. Okay, so where we are relative to Quito. So here is, here is Quito. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's one of the cities that lies in the, in the valley between the two ranges of the Andes Mountains that come here. We are located here in Shell. So two new communities we're going to be going into are Warani communities. Most of the Warani sector is in this area right here. So we're going to be going to Tiweno, which is located right here. Yeah, Tiweno, T-I-W. Yep, T-I-W. That's the and, airstrip. Right? Yes, that's the airstrip designation. And Tony Mpati, T-M-P, okay. Tango Mike Papa. So the question we get a lot is, is why the airplane? Like why is the airplane so necessary for the work that we do and for transportation? The roads do not, I mean the roads are extending more and more every year, but the roads don't get there. And so the only way to go in is to drive as far as you can and then either hike in by foot or go in by canoe. And the rivers are so windy. So the, the distance it takes, the time it takes to travel by land is just, it's exponential. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be taking a 30 minute flight. Um, that is about a full day about 12 hours wow. to get in by foot yeah and now that is exponential so another community that we fly into quite a bit is Pinduyaku right here okay that is about a 45 minute flight it takes three to five days to wow. get out there <laughs> and so the further you get in the more just exponential that land travel time is um, so on average a one hour flight with mm -hmm. us saves five days of travel to understand the wings of hope mission we had to head into the jungle to learn about the unique challenges it presents. The ground crew prepares everything we'll need to make this happen. Supplies are loaded up in the aircraft and it's inspected before flight. Communication is key to a successful mission and requires each member of the Wings of Hope team to anticipate and prepare for any challenges we might face. <laughs>
took off, weather looks good, everything's fine. Halfway through the flight, we see that at the destination, there's some, some thick cloud covering and the airstrip is obscured. We have to turn around and come back. We will literally just wait here to see what the weather does. And if we can find a hole, we'll thread the needle and just see if we can get from here to Tabueno. And it's kind of up to the, the gods of the Amazon at this point. So we're going to wait and see. <clears throat> so I guess now that we're not flying the plane and we don't have much else to do, now might be a good time to talk about the watch. So this is an Aura's Big Crown, but this edition specifically uses a caliber 401, which is Aura's caliber 400, modified to accommodate a sub-seconds at six o'clock, lending a sort of classic air to the watch. And of course, I love the humanitarian cause associated with it and so forth, but as a watch, how does it stand up? Well, I think the caliber 400 is brilliant. I think the design tapping into sort of this mid-century aviation theme is nicely done. It's a 40 millimeter stainless steel case, so sized nicely. It works for me on a seven and a half inch wrist. And the one thing about this watch is that there's no single design element that jumps out, pulls you in, and keeps you there. It's almost too balanced and too perfect and sort of mundane. And that might be by design. But I think this watch is really about the story. It's about the whole package. It's about this obscure aviation NGO that helps isolated communities in 10 countries around the world. So that's what I think about the watch in a nutshell at the end of day two. But the story's not over. We haven't completed the mission that we came down here to do. So we're gonna keep our ear to the radio, cross our fingers, and pray that tomorrow there's even a little window where we can get out of here and get into the Amazon. The rain just wasn't stopping, even on day three. So we went with plan B. We took a pickup to a Shuar village that was only accessible by unimproved dirt roads. The drive was grueling. It involved fording rivers and crossing mud holes. Even going just a few miles can take hours. Wings of Hope. Program director Tiffany is speaking with the local community to kind of see what needs to be done or what steps need to be taken to get this airstrip to become operational again. Because as it stands, the only way in or out of here, I think it's a three hour car ride through the jungle to a river. If this airstrip behind me were actually operational, it would take 20 minutes to get from Shell to here. Wouldn't have had to make that journey. So right now, part of the mission is finding out what needs to be done to make this airstrip operational so they can add it to the list of places that they can serve. Eh, al mismo tiempo mujeres embarazadas, pero yo quisiera cuando haya esa avioneta o cuando mantenemos la pista, ahí sería más facilidad, eh, más oportunidad, más fácil como para llegar al hospital. Aquí cuando, ejemplo, salió antes de Adir una mujer embarazada, salió con el bus, pero qué gran sacrificio que era eso para esa mujer. Y siempre pasa aquí, siempre así, toda emergencia sale por, por el bus. We had one day left before we made the long trek back to Quito to go home. We had come all this way to fly into the Amazon and witness the work of Wings of Hope, but so far, the rain had kept us grounded. But all that changed when we were finally cleared for takeoff. We were back to plan A take off from Shell and deliver food, water, and medical supplies to a small village in the jungle. Okay, vamos ahora. Let's pray. Padre, te damos gracias, Señor, en esta mañana por poder usar esta máquina. There's always a sense of urgency when making these flights, because like we've seen, the weather doesn't always cooperate. 
If these supplies don't make it here today, it could be several days or even weeks before another run. Life is tough in the Amazon for the indigenous peoples. The scale is just so different down there. Seemingly small challenges are actually very big challenges, and sometimes there's no clear solution. This very watch is part of a much larger cycle, one that uses watches as a tool not only to tell time, but to power important humanitarian efforts around the world, like aid to the Warani and Shuar tribes in the remote Amazon. The work of Wings of Hope picks up where the Oris Limited Edition watch leaves off. <laughs> Most folks like to think of a watch as the final product, the result of effort put forth by a team of designers, engineers, and marketers. But what if we thought of it as somewhere in the middle of the journey? What if the watch was a starting point to something else? <laughs> 